Welcome to another tech video. We're going to be looking at uh, a Packard Bell Core i5 machine. Uh, this is a second generation CPU apparently. Um, it's been gifted to us from one of our lovely customers. Um, they don't use it anymore, they've moved on to just using an iPad. So we're going to see what the issue is with it and what we can do to resurrect it, um, bearing in mind that um, I don't believe there's ever been any upgrades done on it, so we're going to have a look at it today. So this is the unit itself. Let's have a quick look around it. We've got our power input. We've got our power input. We've got our Ethernet adapter. We've got a VGA out, we've got an HDMI out, we've got, uh, looks like a USB 2 port, we've got a speaker input, or sorry, a microphone input and a headset out, or a headphones out. On the other side, we've got another USB 2 port, we've got a USB 3 port, and we've got a DVD drive and the uh, Kensington lock. <clears throat> And also on the front, it looks like we've got an, oh yeah, <laughs> an SD card reader, which is uh, which is an added added little bonus. Let's get that back in there. So I don't know what condition this is going to be like inside. Uh, all we know is that the battery is completely dead, so we're going to be changing the battery out. And if it needs a RAM upgrade, we'll also do that. And if it needs uh, an SSD drive putting in then we'll also do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the battery that doesn't work. I'm going to put that to one side. And then we're going to have a look under here to see what we've got under this one. I presume this is the probably the hard disk and memory with any luck. Okay, yep, so we've got our memory. <clears throat> we've got a 500 gig WD blue drive. Let's just take the memory out and have a look, see what this is. Okay, so this is DDR3 10600. Uh, two, two gig chips, so it's only got four gig of RAM in here, so um, we will change that out. Uh, we're also going to take out this hard drive if we can work out how to get it out of the system let's have a look it should just pull out i think so i think it's just a bit stiff so let's see if we can gradually prise it out yep it is just a bit stiff seem to be stuck on this uh, thing there so we're going to be changing that out for an ssd drive um here's our Wi-Fi card. Uh, one of the things that we normally do for a really old machine like this would be to change out the thermal paste on the CPU. Um, I'm not sure if we're actually going to do that today. I'm not sure how easy or difficult it's going to be to get in here. Looks like we've got to remove most things from the system. Okay, let's see if we can get this drive out. Yep, yeah, there we go. That's the, uh, the DVD drive removed. Let's just have a look around it to see where the actual break point is. Okay. So it looks like to get to everything, we're going to have to remove a lot. I think we are going to do that just so we can have a good look around inside it. It's going to be a bit of a pain to do. Let's get rid of this panel as well. Okay, so there's nothing in there, but we need to remove the panel. So we'll just go around, get rid of all the screws. I don't think I've ever, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a laptop with so many screws. Okay, now. We're going to need to remove. Cables. 
from around here. This is one of the aerials. Just need to get rid of that and this one as well. In fact, we'll probably just take out that card. I think we will just remove that Wi-Fi card as well. That's there. Okay, any more screws? Okay, yep, we've got a load along the back here as well. So these are M2 by 3. Okay, so far we've got three different sizes screws. Okay, I think we're there now. Right. Let's see how we get into this device. Okay, well that was easy, yeah, a, lot, a lot easier than I thought. <clears throat> Just the old 800 odd screws to remove and then the top should come off. Just check to see where the ribbon cables are. There we go. Okay, so it comes apart in two sections. So this first section comes off. Although we didn't probably really need to remove that. Okay, nothing under there. Anything of interest under here. So we've got a 2032 battery. And then we're going to have a look under here. Okay, so there's two, two cables to release the keyboard. To get to the CPU, we've got to take the main board out. Let's see if we can get the cables released and then one two is that one and then the keyboard block comes off all right so we're going to leave that no we're going to have to take this one off as well so this one comes out from the trackpad. Let's see. Okay, that should, in theory, just lift up. Unlock it. It does. And then that's just stuck on the back there. Right. So that's that block removed as well. <clears throat> Now, okay, so the aerial is stuck on round there, and that's all connected as well. Oh, this is a real pain to get to. And next, we've got to take this uh, ribbon cable off. This connects over to the USB ports. Like that. How does that come off? It just lifts up. Okay, now that is fairly free moving, so I'm going to leave the aerial in there. Okay, now that should, in theory, just go over to the Lift up, right, we've got another connector underneath here. Enough for us to be able to lift it up to see what's going on. And that is that connector there. Okay, and we can remove this aerial cable as well. Remembering that we need to stick that back down again. Right. That's it, that's our main board released. Okay, what a massive job just to get the uh, cooler off. So, let's have a look at that to see. Yep, okay, so that's all just simply attached. Right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to remove 
the lock. First time I've ever known the screws to come all the way out on something like this. There we go. Let's now carefully lift that off. Okay, so the thermal paste is absolutely solid as you would expect. So we're going to take some isopropyl alcohol and we're going to give this a clean, to scrape the excess off to start with. So now we've got all the paste cleaned off, we can reapply some thermal paste. So we've got some ice mountain number one. Apparently it's superior performance and reliability is always marvellous. So we're going to add a small amount onto there. Don't need any more than that. We're now going to reattach our block. And just screw this down finger tight like that. Finger tight with a screwdriver. So we've just removed the heat pipe and spreader. So that is all now done. We don't need to do anything with the GPU there. And now we can get the board back in. <laughs> Replacement battery, ninja battery. Okay, let's make sure that that just goes in there like that. Looks good. All right, so we're going to leave it on charge for a little while. Make sure we've got enough battery power going in. We have a orange light on the front, which is a good sign. So that suggests it's charging. 
All right, so here we are in the system. Uh, it's actually worked, which is super. We can see our, our drive, a data SU800 is the hard disk. We can see our, everything else. Here we are booted into Windows. So this um, install took around uh, four to six hours um, getting all the updates done, but it's all fully up to date. And as you can see here, we've got our i5-2410M CPU running at 2.3 gigahertz. I think this boosts up to around about 3.4 or 3.8, I'm not entirely sure. But we've got our eight gig of memory in here. Um, it's nice and cool. The fan's not running really fast due to the thermal paste that we changed which was a traumatic experience to say the least. Um, yeah, so everything everything's done. So let's just go in and have a look at our device settings and let you know what we had to do here. Let's go and find our device manager. So we had two things to install. Um, the first one we had to install uh, the chipset drivers from 2018 and then run a Windows update. So it actually updated the actual chipset drivers. And the other thing was, um, was the SD card reader. So we needed to install the drivers for the SD card reader as Windows didn't pick that up. But everything else is, uh, was, was done as part of the Windows 10 installation. As you can see here, there's no, obviously there's no TPM chip showing. So um, uh, Windows 10 won't native, uh, Windows 11 won't natively install on here, but you can install it um, by using the method that we've previously documented. So um, there's, a, there's a way that you can install Windows 11 with no TPM chip. Um, so check out our channel for that. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we want to test. Um, the first one is the webcam. So let's have a look at the quality of this. I don't expect it to be any good on a second generation machine. Actually, this is pretty good. All right, so I stand corrected. It's actually not a bad webcam. Uh, 720p, all right, um, probably 30 frames a second. Yep, 30 frames a second in the video quality. So actually the webcam on this machine is, is very good. Looks really good quality. So quite surprised about that <laughs> um, the next thing I want to check out is the sound quality so let's go to YouTube um, and here's our video on how to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware but let's have a listen to the sound quality Windows 11 installation, which is in our, uh, it's on our desktop. okay so what have we got the volume running at all right and then, as you can so sound quality is uh, not bad it's quite Quite quiet, it's nowhere near as loud as a modern day uh, all-in-one machine. I suspect these are probably around about maybe one watt or one and a half watt speakers maximum in here. Um, they sound quite tinny, um, but all in all, not a bad little laptop for, um, for a freebie. Okay, and then finally, we just have a quick whiz around the machine. As you can see, everything went back together really nicely. No damage on it at all after taking out the main board to apply the new thermal paste and that's it all running Windows 10 so if you found that video useful give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel I just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one